Welcome our video friends. Appreciate you being with us today and I hope your day is a good one. And this is the, I believe the second Sunday of July now. Uh, we're moving on into the month of July. It seems that the days and the months fly by these days and summertime is upon us. We're uh, into the first real month of summer now and uh, it's the time of the year when uh, the garden vegetables start coming in, tomatoes and green beans and corn. And so it's a good time of year for those of us who like to have fresh garden vegetables. And that can be a real treat. And some of you know something about that. And it can be a real blessing if you're pretty good at uh, your gardening skills. But uh, it's the time of the year for it to come about. We've had a lot of rain this summer and good warm sunshine. So... Uh, vegetables should be doing very well uh, this year and I know some of you love to can and put up and it's a good thing to be doing and who knows we may have to do a lot more of it as time goes on well my dear friends we'll pick up today in our study in the book of Genesis and it's quite a quite a book and as I've said before we could stay on the first three chapters or even the first chapter of Genesis for a long, long time about the creation, the six days of creation. We could talk about that and we could study examples of that and studies about that for a long, long time. But nonetheless, we'll leave that where it's at. I've said what I've said about it just in general terms. And that's what these studies are intended to be, not to go to seed on any one point and to linger there any longer than is necessary but uh, to move through the scriptures and to give us a good overview of the scriptures as we go through them. Today, we're in chapter 4 of the book of Genesis. The last session, we talked about to the offering of Cain and of Abel and the great differences between the offerings of Cain and of Abel. And as you'll, you'll notice, <clears throat> Cain's offering <clears throat> was, a bloodless sacri was a bloodless offering, the fruit of the ground. Abel's uh, was a bloody offering, wherein blood had to be shed and wherein an animal had to die. And so that was a big difference. And we talked about that, how that the offering of the Lord Jesus Christ is typified in the offering that Abel brought. But in the offering that Cain brought, it was the fruit of man's own works. And how that a work salvation can never save anybody. As we study the Bible, we learn one thing. The focal point of all the scripture is Jesus Christ and his sacrifice for our sins, his great sacrifice for us. And he, he, he made of himself <clears throat> the sacrificial lamb. As John stood on the, on the banks of Galilee one day and said, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Abel's offering is a type of that. The, uh, the coats of skin that God Almighty made for Adam and Eve typified the offering of his son as well. Blood had to be shed. An animal had to die. And I've ran into those who mock an animal sacrifice. <clears throat> and we don't make them in our day. We don't. Because Jesus Christ has already offered himself. So therefore, we don't offer a sin offering before God. He is our sin offering. Jesus Christ is our righteousness. He has paid the sin debt that you and I owed. He is and, and was our sacrificial lamb. So therefore, we don't bring a lamb. We don't bring a goat. We don't bring a bullock to our worship. Uh, but we come in Jesus' name, who has already offered himself for our sins. And so that is the basics of all the scripture of salvation. Now, you come to your worship of your good deeds, and you've come to worship a wrong. Uh, if you've come and standing before God and saying, Lord, I've done this, I've done that, you've got entirely the wrong idea of God and his forgiveness. And uh, as Cain had the wrong idea about the sacrifice that he brought, and Cain knew better, Cain knew better than that. Uh, he knew better than to bring a bloodless offering. I have no doubt Adam was an intelligent man. And no doubt Adam explained unto Cain and Abel both. He had to uh, about a sin offering. And when they come to worship the Lord, that you'd bring 
a sacrificial, uh, 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 most likely a lamb, first of the flock. And, uh, and Cain disobeyed that. He did not obey, more than likely, his father's instructions, and that which he knew in his own uh, innate being, that he should be brain before God. And right here, we'll, note, we'll back up into verse 5, but, Cain, but unto Cain and his offering he had not respect. And Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. It means he is very angry. He is very mad, so much that his countenance just fell. Uh, the smile left his face that he come before the Lord with, and, uh, and his upbeat attitude that he brought that offering with. Well, but it all fell when he realized that uh, God would not accept his offering. Now, uh, now, notice this right here, his anger. We're going to see more of his anger in the next few verses. He became very angry about the matter, uh, that God would not receive and respect that offering. Very angry about it. He, the Bible said he's very raw for that. And if you never see the flesh rising up uh, in the book of Genesis, right here is one of the first... Uh, uh, instances, instances of a man getting very, very angry, uh, so much to where he even killed his brother later on. And uh, anger is getting the best of him, and his countenance fell. I mean, you can see it all the way through him. <clears throat> so it is when we yield uh, to the flesh. Any time we yield to the flesh uh, to do whatever it prompts to do, our countenance will fall. Anger is very apt to set in, and anger is a work of the flesh, no doubt to that. And uh, his countenance fell. And you could tell it by looking at him, and uh, that uh, things were not happy in the life of Cain. And uh, Abel, uh, when he brought his offering, I imagine Abel left that offering with an upbeat attitude, with a cheerful countenance, and a happy countenance, and a happy heart, and a happy spirit, uh, because his offering had been accepted. And right here you see the great difference between religion and between uh, true uh, worshipers of the living God and could we also say true Christianity. And uh, as, as somebody has rightly said, Christianity is not a practice, but it is a person. The person of Jesus Christ is what it's all about. And, uh, and still today, I mean, people can get really riled up with you uh, and uh, and with preachers when they hear uh, that their good works do not save them. And sadly, I've heard churches and I've heard sermons where, uh, 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 to the contrary and where they tell people, you do good and God will accept you. You do this, you do that. All the while missing the point of Jesus Christ and his offering. And I uh, and I tell you, and I've met people too, personally, I've met people and um, whom I've witnessed to, and, uh, and they will start telling me about how good they are and how good they've been. I've had that to happen more than once. And I have, I have witnessed uh, actually to a lot of people, and I have given out uh, multi-thousands of gospel tracts, and, uh, and we, and uh, me and some guys from the church, we have gone out many, many years and talked to people and inviting them to church and uh, talking to them about their soul and their salvation. And more than once, more than once, uh, I've had people to say, well, I'm all right. Uh, I do this or I do that, talking about the good works. And uh, that's not the way of salvation. Uh, one guy asked him, uh, do you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? And the guy looked at me kind of strange and serious-like, almost like I had offended him. And he said, I'm a deacon in a Baptist church. Well, hey, being a deacon in a Baptist church don't make you saved. They don't make you uh, fit to go to God's heaven. Uh, no, sir, it does not. And I've heard people uh, uh, give other uh, testimonies. One guy asked him, did he know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? And his reply to me was he had never been a witness against anybody. I thought, what's that got to do with knowing Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior? Not, and truthfully, not a thing. But you hear replies like that. And I guarantee uh, almost anywhere you go, you can find people who think that they're pleasing God by bringing the fruit of the ground 
and offering that unto him. Uh, these, all the other religions, the earth, you know what they teach? Some of you do. They teach do good and uh, God will accept you. Uh, bring your monies, bring your good works. That's what it's all about. And it's a bloodless religion is what it is. Uh, but those who know Jesus Christ and true preachers of the faith <clears throat> that's described in this Bible, uh, they'll preach a bloody sacrifice in Jesus Christ. Believe upon him. Uh, God's not interested in your good works as far as the offering for sin. He, he does not accept that. <clears throat> and we, we are saved unto good works, but we're not saved by them. The Bible is so clear about this matter. I don't see how people miss it, how they get it so confused. But I run into people all the time and hear about people all the time uh, who are thinking their good works are going to take them to heaven. Uh, there was one dentist that I knew, and uh, his wife was telling me uh, about his faith, and she said uh, he was this, this, and that. Uh, no doubt to it. Uh, never, never did she tell me uh, that he knew Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. Never did she mention that. Um, and so I took their odd, uh, they was kind of leaning on his good works to do that. <clears throat> and so um, we, we can learn a lot right here about the Lord God and about salvation and what God truly accepts and what he doesn't accept. As I said before, uh, you point out the false cults that you want to in this world and you pull them out, and they'll, and they'll tell you, their teachings are, uh, it's, it's usually like a, a steps climbing up somewhere, and they'll give you the first step, the stuff you're supposed to start doing. Then they'll give you the second step, if you've got that mastered. Or they'll give you the first degree, second degree, and third degree, on up to like a 32nd degree. And some of you know what I'm talking about. And uh, they'll teach you that if you'll do this, that you're, going, you're definitely going to go to heaven. All the while ignoring uh, Jesus Christ and his sacrifice for our sins. Now that's a sad group and that's a sad commentary on some of these people who are so uh, so far from the truth and so deep into, into personal do-good works. And, uh, and uh, you, you can go to hell being the 32nd or the top step of these religions as sure as you're born if you don't know Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. And uh, you, you're going to miss it all together. Uh, it's all together a bloodless sacrifice is what it is. And a bloodless offering. And as, uh, and as Cain did not get his offering accepted, yours will not be either. Mine will not be either. Uh, when we who know the Lord, when we get down to pray, we go there in Jesus' name. Uh, when we die uh, and, and we'll go to heaven, it'll be because of the good work and the finished work of Jesus Christ, a bloody work, a sacrifice of his own body and his own life was given and uh, uh, upon the cross, a horrible death that he paid for you and I. His blood was shed and the, the spear pierced his side and the blood flowed out of his, out of his side. Uh, the crown of thorns was pressed upon his brow and no doubt blood flowed over his face. Uh, the book of Isaiah tells us his vicious was so marred more than that of a man. When you look, if you could look upon Christ as he hung upon the cross, uh, he would not have looked like a man because of the uh, beatings and of the bloodshed and, and his hanging upon that rugged cross. And that's what you would see. And you couldn't recognize it as being a recognizable man according to the Bible. And so uh, the, a bloody sacrifice it was, a very bloody sacrifice. And those that took him down from the cross, no doubt they had bloody hands where they reached up to touch the body of Jesus Christ, to take him down and to wrap him in the barrel cloth and to put him in Joseph's new tomb. And no doubt those, uh, what, uh, the cloth that it was wrapped in was blood soaked. And uh, no doubt to that. And so the blood of Jesus Christ was shed for your sins and mine. And good works could never, no human good works could ever substitute uh, the finished work of Jesus Christ upon the cross. And uh, so when we go to church, don't you get the idea we go prancing in there because we've done something good? No. 
we humbly go in. We humbly go before the Lord, realizing how worthless a sinner that we are, how great we are in need of Jesus Christ. 